Let me give you a brief overview, and I hope everybody can hear me, uh, what we're going to do. I'm going to uh, show some cases using what is called a custom matrix technique, which allows you to reproduce very subtle uh, anatomy of tooth structure in your light-cured composite with very little work. In most situations, I can save five to ten minutes on each composite that I place. I can uh, eliminate most of the finishing and uh, certainly occlusal adjustment. We're also able to save on materials and as I mentioned time, so that's your time and the patient's time. And I'm going to show you cases at the beginning where I challenge anybody in the world to do this freehand. We're able to get results that you cannot do freehand, that you wish you could. And uh, I used to start off with easy cases and then we progressed to hard cases and most of the people thought, well, this is only for easy cases. So I'm going to kind of reverse that uh, situation now. We're going to start off with a fairly difficult case. This patient was referred to me for porcelain laminate veneer. She's an adult patient. She's had orthodontics to close the diastema between eight and nine. The diastema opened up. She had adult orthodontics again to close it up. And then they even splinted this case, and the diastema opened up again. So this patient was referred to me for porcelain laminate veneers, and I am about three feet into the operatory when the first words out of the patient's mouth are, quote, doctor, I want to look perfect when I leave today. Those are the first words out of the patient's mouth. So what do I do? After anesthetizing the patient, I make an impression with a clear polyvinyl siloxane bite registration material over the maxillary anterior eight teeth, the labial surface, incisal surface, and lingual surface, and I also get up three or four millimeters up onto the gingiva. This is done without a tray. This material sets in about, you know, 90 the patient's mouth, so by the time this material is set, the patient may not even be anesthetized to have, uh, to have the teeth started to be prepared. Now remember this patient had a diastema and she wants to look perfect when she leaves today. If you look very closely, you'll see something sitting down here. I take my favorite composite shaping and placement instrument, my number 12 blade, and I cut the diastema out of this impression. Now this patient has a, an impression of her maxillary eight anterior teeth but without a diastema because it was cut out. It's now sitting down here. So we prepped the teeth, and this is nothing special. We prepped the teeth for porcelain laminate veneers. We did the four anterior maxillary teeth. We took an impression the way you normally do. And now this patient wants to look perfect when she leaves today. So what would you do in a case like this? Let me show you what I did. I took Herculite in the shade that we wanted, I believe it was A1, and I inject it into the labial surfaces of the maxillary four teeth where we're going to make uh, temporary porcelain or composite laminate veneers for this patient. And when you take something like Herculite, you need to condense it into this surface. So I take a smooth surface condenser and I condense it into the surface of the impression so it picks up all the subtle irregularities, enamel irregularities that this patient presented with. So now we go ahead, we put that in the patient's mouth with pressure, and I hold it for about 10 seconds with pressure in the patient's mouth, and then we light cure from the labial, incisal, and lingual surfaces. I want to show you the before picture again, and I want to bring your attention to the enamel highlights on tooth number 10, more on the mesial, it's enamel highlight towards the mesial of tooth number 9, a number of enamel highlights in the center of tooth number eight, and a series of enamel highlights on the mesial of tooth number uh, seven. This is the pre-op picture. This is immediately after curing. There's been no adjustment and no finishing. I want to point out the two enamel highlights on tooth number seven, uh, 10, towards the mesial of tooth number nine, more in the center of tooth number eight, in a series on tooth number seven. Now, when was the last time that you reproduced subtle enamel highlights on an anterior tooth in the patient that you're doing veneers for? It just won't happen. If you were capable of doing this freehand, 
when you cure it, you're going to have an air inhibited layer that needs to be polished off. And when you polish that off, these subtle enamel irregularities that are now reproduced in composite that is not air inhibited would be uh, polished away. Now there is flash, and you can see the flash here at the cervical. Because when I put pressure on this custom matrix, it also put pressure on the gingiva around the necks of these teeth. That composite, instead of going subgingival, is supergingival. It's easy to finish off this composite. I use a uh, 7901 carbide finishing burr to remove that composite that is flash. And this patient is going to leave the operatory looking better than when she came in. Remember her request. I don't know how many of you get, get this request. I want to look perfect when I leave today. So we're able to reproduce all the subtle enamel irregularities of this patient without the diastema in 15 minutes. I challenge anybody in the world to take as much time as they want and try to do this type of work. So we, we removed the flash. In two weeks, the veneers came back. They all fit. We cemented them. And then, uh, the, I'll answer your question in just a second. We, an, uh, we cemented them, and the patient went home and was very happy. Now, let's say the veneers didn't fit. The impression I used was a polyvinyl siloxane bite registration material, extremely dimensionally stable. I saved that impression in case these didn't fit so I could reproduce the same composite uh, veneers that I did originally. The question I'm almost positive you're going to ask is, how were those veneers held in place? Was that your question? No. What's your question? My question was, when those veneers come to your office, you just gotta, how difficult is it for you to remove that composite off? Okay. That will, that will leave the margin or? Yeah, got you. Okay. That composite, those composite veneers were ha held on mechanically because when I forced the impression to place, some of the composite in that impression went beyond the height of contour in a buccal lingual direction. When I cured that from the lingual, it mechanically locked on those composite veneers. Then when the patient comes back two weeks later, I take a sickle scaler and I broke those veneers off. They came off in about three pieces because they're only about a millimeter thick. And so it's, it's, the composite is not difficult to break. And I was able to break that off with a sickle scaler and put on my veneers. So they were not held in place with bonded composite. 